What's up, y'all? All right, so in this episode of MTC Exposed, you know, you guys like to give me a call and just say, hey, yo, Lockout, we want to talk about, you know, talk about the company and share my experience with uh with said company for MT- MTC Exposed. And I'm like, I'm good with that. I'm like, I'm good with that. You guys want to come on and holler at me about uh, holler at me about your company? Let's do it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Today's company we're going to get into is Night Transportation. Yeah, we are uh, going to talk to a, a former driver that's that's been there, and he's going to share his experience with uh, Night Transportation. So let's just uh, go ahead and jump right into it, man. What's going on, bro? Hey man, man, still still running this road, man. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. All right, so how how long you been uh how long you been trucking all together, man? Uh, I just hit four years last month. Oh, okay, four years. All right, all right. So two of those years was with uh night transportation. So what uh what what is nah, nah. oh no no not 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 two years. Uh, I was there. Like uh, right up, right up under a year. Right under a year. All right, all right. Yeah. So jumping in night transportation, man. Um, what was what was it like going through the uh, recruiting phase? Or let me re- let me back it up just a little bit more. What made you choose? What made you choose night? Well, uh, so I started driving for um. I was working for Pepsi, and I got my class A through them. And um, so, you know, I know you know about this new restriction thing, the automatic only yeah. restriction. Yeah. So I I had that on my license, and when I when I left Pepsi, Knight and maybe like two other companies was the only ones that would um, actually work with me on that because I had experience. Everybody else wanted to send me send me back to school and all this other stuff. I'm like, I'm not going to go back to school. I already got my class A's. I'm not, not going to do that. Uh, uh, well, at first of all, I didn't even go to a, a truck driving school. I, I literally got my class A's through Pepsi. So Pepsi was the truck driving school for me. And um, Knight was the only one that would work with me on that. And um, everybody else was trying to send me back through their school and some wouldn't even, they couldn't even do nothing with me. Like, okay, well, I'll go with Knight. And um, it was maybe like maybe one other company, maybe two other. I think uh, Western Express and um, CR England will work with me on that. But I didn't want to mess with either one of those companies. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So uh, Knight Transportation decided to uh, bring you in. Uh, and uh, and give you the opportunity to, to drive for them. So what was uh what was uh the recruiting process like? Well, uh, did did you call them up or or well, obviously you had to call them up in order to find out about the restrictions, right? Right, right. Oh. I, I called them up. Um, I forget my recruiter name, uh, but she was cool. You know, she she walked me through everything, and um, pretty much. I didn't even uh, fill out the application, like, I, you know, until, like, after I had talked to her. And uh, she sent me the link over to the application, fill out the application. I want to say maybe, like, three days later, they had me set up for orientation. All right. So th- and- so take me through the conversation with uh, – with you and the recruiter, man. I mean, what what was some of the questions you asked? Uh, what was some of the what was some of the things that uh, the recruiter uh, offered to you? So uh, pretty much, uh, like I was just asking, you know, pretty much, could they work with me on my automatic restriction? Was that going to be a problem? And uh, she said no, because ninety percent of the fleet was. Uh, all automatic at that time. I think now they're all automatic, no no manuals at all. Mm-hmm. And um, she was like, uh, "Are you being an experienced driver? Uh, we would start you off at 41, 41 cent a mile." Hmm. Which was that? That wasn't the case. Was that? That wasn't the case. 
Oh, uh, that wasn't the case. Was it? Was it more? Was it more or less than forty-one cent? Uh, it, yeah, it was actually less. But um, the reason why is because um, they wanted me to. Uh, they wanted to send me through their squire program, which is pretty much you know you, you know once you after you got into life you go out with a trainer on the road for you know so many weeks or whatever. And uh, I think it was. Uh, Supposed to be for me was four weeks, but I ended up doing two weeks. But to get back to, you know, um, the Temper Mile, uh, it, it ended up being 35 cents per mile. Mm, 35 cents a mile. Yeah. All right. So basically, what the recruiter told you, did, did the recruiter kind of like, kind of like said up to 41 cents a mile, or did she say, 41 cent a mile. There's there's two ways of saying it. So did did she say it the one way or did she say it the other way? Well, I think she meant true 41 cent per mile. But, you know, I know she, she explained the slider shift that might have a slider shift, might have a slider shift. So they always give you the low end because, you know, you expect it to run four miles, you know, you know, uh, you're expected to run at least 400 miles on a boat, you know, at least that. Okay. And that, that's the low end. Okay. Okay. But, so, um, so the low, so, so pretty much, uh, so pretty much, uh, a slight, uh, what is actually, is it a slight now that you, uh, now that you're driven for them, was it a sliding scale or was it 35 cent, uh, a mile? Nah, it, it, it was a sliding scale. It was a sliding scale. Oh, and, um, it was? Yeah, it, it was a sliding scale. Um, I think if you drove anything over 400 miles on a load, you would get the low end cent per mile. And then anything lower than that, you know, it would bump up like maybe like uh, 300 to 400. You would get like 38 cents. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe... Uh, 200 to 300, you would get like 41 cents, mm -hmm. something like that. But like when I was asking her, you know, I was like, okay, so I'm going to get 41 cents an hour. Like, will I have to go into any training? And right off the bat, she said, no, I shouldn't have to go through any training. I, I already got my class days. I had been driving for like maybe eight months already. Prior to and, getting, uh, prior to getting with at, them. At the, yeah. At the time, max requirement was six months experience okay. for experience driving. Okay. Okay. So I was going. I was. I was going in thinking I wasn't gonna have to do any training. I was like, okay, well, I'm good. I'm cool. But uh, I, I ended up having to do training, and um, that's where the thirty-five cent per mile came from. And I think uh, once you drove like ten. Or fifteen thousand miles, you would get a six cent pay raise, but you would. I ended up getting forty one cents a mile. Oh, okay, okay, all right. So orientation, man. How how long was orientation? Orientation was uh, really two and a half days. For some people, it might have been three or four, depending on uh, how long. You know, how long it took for them to get their drug test back or, you know, certain employment verifications, things of that nature. Drug tests. Uh, drug, drug, drug tests. Was it was it urine or was it uh, hair follicle? It was both. Both. It was both, uh, both. hair follicle and urine. Okay, so what it it was it was both if they couldn't get one from the other or it's both that they that they disqualify you if they couldn't get either or. It it was if so they disqualified you, it had to been from it, it could have been from either one. Um, I mean the hair follicle, like a lot of people don't know about a hair follicle, like it costs so much money to do. So I don't, I'm not, you know, I don't want to, you know, uh, too, you know, I don't want to. Telling you false, 
story, but I'm pretty sure Mike said they were only going back six months. And that's off the hair but, follicle, I mean, right? Yeah, that's off the hair follicle. Like, most companies are not going to go no further than a year on the hair follicle. Okay, just you to know, see, just it, just to see it, your drug pass. Okay, okay. Uh, I said yeah. just to just to see your drug pass. They're not going to go. They only going to go back. Uh, they only going to go back six months on that. Huh. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. So I mean, I, you know, with hair follicle, I'm not even sure. I'm I'm not even sure or 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 understand. You know, like. Like hair follicles. I, I just seen a video recently of a of a female getting her hair chopped off. Literally, I mean, the 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 person literally pulled like like a whole handful of hair and and chopped and 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 chopped it off. Like what? Are, I mean, I mean, what, what are they? What are they actually looking for? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like, you know, I, I know you know that, like, so they can tell how long you've been smoking. They say the hair follicle goes up to 10 to 12 years or something like that. You can, they can speak back on it. But it's like, who's going to spend all that money to go back that far? I, I, I don't care how productive the company is. If they're going back further than a year, that's just, I don't know. But and they're, not, they're, not taking a, they're not taking a whole lot of hair. They're just taking... About the size of maybe, um, I would say about the size of maybe like a, a half dollar or something like that. Oh, okay. Like they they took they, they took my face here. Like I had like a a nice link to a goatee, and they just cut off that just a little bit, of it. and that was it. So from so it didn't look like so from orientation, you said about how how. how you said it's about like what three to four days and all like that. So the last day they actually uh, they assign you a truck. No, so so you know I, I had to go to training. The last day, um, it was like okay, we can have a trainer for you next week. So I, I went home and um, and I, and I came back the next week. But uh, my actual the train the guy that I was supposed to go train with. He had, had a loaner truck, and um, so it was a manual, but what you knew legally, I could not drive. Right. So I I, I stood, I, I stayed there for, they, they put me in a hotel again, and I, I stayed there for a whole week, and they were just uh, pretty much uh, letting me run around the parking lot and packing and stuff. You know, I was with a, another driver. Um, he was on like um like duty, so I would just run around their uh, terminal and just pick spot the back end. I guess they wanted to see if I could back, you know. So the following week, I actually went out with my trainer. Now, I remember I told you I was supposed to go out for four weeks, for four weeks, mm-hmm. but um, I, I only went out for two weeks, or really a week and a half. It, it was a week and a half. It, I got I went out on Monday and I was back on Wednesday, and then I got my own truck. But uh, he he seen I could drive, and um, pretty much like he called up the the, the squire driver manager. He was like, hey, "Man, this guy don't need to be out here four weeks until two weeks, and uh, get him his own truck." All right. After that, I was. I was on my whole truck. All right, so so the uh, so with the help of the trainer, you was able to get to get in your own truck before, you know, the, the within two weeks instead of rocking out the whole four. The the actual time that you had to wait for a trainer, though, what was the actual time? Like a whole two weeks that you had to wait for a trainer. What is the av- average time you think that it is? You know, to wait for a trainer there. Honestly, I think it would have been so, you know, once you come to orientation, you know, you do your orientation, so it's Monday through Wednesday or Thursday. So that following Monday, you should have a trainer. Oh, okay. All right. That following Monday. All right. But now, now let, me, let, let, let me explain this. So so my terminal, 
was in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So that that was that was the wait time for them. Now you know I had a little hiccup because you know I couldn't legally drive a manual. Right, right. But uh, now I can't speak for other terminals because every other terminal that Knight had was a lot different. Like you know they might have had less trainers. Or they might have had less trucks, you know, for guys. So every terminal might have been different from mine. Oh, okay. So what? The, so let me ask you this: You said you uh, you're you're restricted. Do you have any plans in the future to uh, take that restrictions off your license? Oh, I already have it off. I already have it off. Oh, okay, okay. All right, cool, cool. All right. So yeah. back to night, man. So so what was uh. What's the culture like there at night, man? What, what were some of the things you liked about it? What were some of the things you liked about it? Well, I had um, I had two driver managers. Um, so while I was in their Squire program, I had a driver manager for like my first fifteen thousand miles, and which he was he was really cool. Like um, I think like his like the first two weeks I was running, he was just kind of seeing where I was at, so he wasn't trying to push me too hard, but then once he realized I could run, you know, because I was telling him, hey, we got anything else for me to go? Like, I got, you know, I'm ready to go. Like, let me roll. He was sending me loads, sending me loads. And then once I uh, completed my uh, choir training, I uh, got another driver manager, and uh, me and him was about the same age, and, you know, we had, like, some of the similar interests. So we and him we clicked pretty soon, man. He ran me. Only thing I didn't like uh, about Knight was, uh, you know, they 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 get a lot of freight in the Northeast. It seemed like I it seemed like I lived up there for a while, you know. <laughs> but so the Northeast, you you talking you you talking New York, Connecticut, Boston, New England, and all all parts of uh all parts in that one top corner of the world. Yeah, yeah, Massachusetts, Connecticut, all that. Yeah, you that. you wasn't a fan of up there. Not 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 too many people are. <laughs> not not too many people yeah, are. I, I really you know, think I, I really think you gotta be a driver that actually lives up in the Northeast in order to appreciate it. Right. I mean, like I, I, I didn't mind it, but it was like, hey, you know, I, I know it's something else out there, like. I wanted to go other places. It was like, hey, you know, but uh, so how about I, I pretty much? How about how had a lot of Northeast. How how about the miles, man? <laughs> what what miles you was averaging there? Man, I was averaging pretty good miles, man. I I was uh, definitely around uh, three thousand a week, you know. Um, okay. Yeah, you know, on the lower on the lower end, you know, you know, you have some some dry weeks. You know, I was probably around twenty five hundred. All right, but, so twenty five hundred to three thousand, that ain't bad. What was your what was your average pay? Uh, what was what was the average pay for that? And did you guys get paid so weekly? Y'all got paid weekly, monthly, or I mean monthly, two weeks, every two weeks, every week. How y'all got paid? So they got two different ways you can get paid. Um, so. I got paid weekly, but you can also get paid every day. Oh, okay. And how 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 is that? How how can you get paid every day? Uh, they had it set up so you would, you know when you first come into Orient State, you can also switch it. You know, even if you know after Orient State, when we first come into Orient State, they had you sign up what type of pay you wanted, daily or weekly. Okay. And um, so daily was pretty much um. Pretty much once you complete a load, you can get paid right then and there. Like, you will get paid the next day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, I, I didn't want to rock with that because, I mean, to have taxes taken out, I mean, three times, four times a week instead of just once a week, you know what I'm saying? I got it seemed you. Seems like I would have made more money by getting paid weekly. Oh, okay, okay. So getting paid. So there's two structures. One is uh, daily, and one is weekly. Okay, and you uh, you chose the weekly. Okay. Uh, what was the right. what was the average pay? Well, what, what we look what what was take home pay like? Uh, take home for me was around eight 
eight, eight to nine. Take home. Um, you know, I had some, I had some, a lot of good weeks in there while I was bringing home eleven hundred. But take home average for me was around like eight or nine. Was that was that good for you? I mean, was you was you content with that, or you you wanted more? Yeah, that, yeah you know, that was um, that was that was pretty good for me. I mean, I'm gonna get like. How I get taxes, you know, I'm, I'm going to get taxed heavy. But um, that was pretty good because, you know, like Pepsi, when I was working at Pepsi, I mean, I literally was bringing home half of that. So, oh, okay. Yeah, you know, yeah, that was, Wait, that was pretty good for me. Okay, okay. Well, you said you were bringing it. You you just said you were bringing on half of of that with Pepsi. Why why is that? Because Pepsi was uh was you 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 didn't get paid per mile. You you got like you got like a a flat rate pay, right? Like twenty dollars an hour, thirty dollars an hour, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, but you you shot pretty high on that twenty dollars an hour. Oh, uh, when I first when I first got the Pepsi. It was thirteen fifty an hour. Oh, thirteen fifty. That's way on the low end. You you're looking after thirty yeah, you're yeah. looking after forty you're looking after forty hours and take home pay about what? Four hundred, five hundred dollars? Yeah, maybe a little less than that, but probably about three hundred. Damn. Yeah, I mean you got your overtime, you got your overtime. You know, right before I left Pepsi, they busted up to like four fifty an hour. Oh, okay. But if you but that was that was only if you had your own route. If you was like um kind of like a swing driver, I guess that's what they call a swing driver. Uh, you would be at fifteen dollars now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a lot higher now. It's, but, high, it's higher than that. You know, that yeah, that's, I gotta that's, I gotta talk. That's what I'm sure it is. I gotta talk to somebody in Pepsi. So that that's mental note. Talk to somebody in Pepsi. All right, man. Back tonight. Uh, what what kind of equipment that they got you in, man? What what was all the amenities in the in the trucks that they they assigned you? All right. So um, I was in a Volvo. Uh, it was like a So, uh, so night transportation, man. You would you uh, would you suggest night transportation for any uh, any of the new jacks that's coming into the game? Would you suggest night transportation to them? I definitely would. I definitely would, especially especially now. You know, they're probably they're probably killing and breaking them. When I came in, they had just merged with Swift, and they like they was like the uh, majority owner of Swift. You know, and they got a bunch of breaks. So for a new guy coming in, if you, if you gonna run, they're gonna let you run and you're gonna make a little bit of money. All right. So if you don't mind me I I, I definitely uh, if you if you don't mind me asking, what what was the reason why you left? So my uh, my dad 
dad, he was, he was, he drove trucks too. Uh, he had got sick on the road and, um, he lost his eyesight. And, uh, so I needed to go home to help out, to be able to, you know, help him move around, you know, take him to his appointments and things of that nature. Uh, that's why I left night. I came back, came back to the local side. And, uh, I've been doing that now since I left night. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, night transportation, man. Hold on real quick. There we go. Night transportation, man. That's, uh, so that would be considered a, a good starter company, a good starter company for somebody, for a new Jacks that's coming into the game. Uh, you rocked out with them for about nine months, and so far you 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 said you'll suggest them. So it's a pretty good company to rock out with. Night transportation, huh? Definitely, definitely. All right. But you know, we didn't we didn't touch up, we didn't touch on it. We touched on a little bit. Like I know a lot of companies are orientation. Like they 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 keep you know they they double book the room. That oh, okay, let's Might let's back up. It. Hold on now, let's back up on that. Yeah, we we didn't touch on that, but yeah, let's back up on that. So getting getting to orientation because yeah, some some of us going to need to know how 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 did they get you to orientation? So my orientation was only an hour from where I stayed there. So I drove down there. Um, they did fly some people down. Uh, down to uh, Charlotte, and um, I think some people roll a bus. I don't really know what kind of bus they roll. I hope not no Greyhound, but <laughs> it, most likely nine yeah, times out of ten, time. it's it's the Greyhound. So <laughs> as as far as the hotel, yeah. the the hotel they 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 double book the hotel. They don't double book. The oh, hotel. they don't. They get their own room. Oh, okay, okay. That's what yeah. I want to make sure that. That they don't double book the hotel. What was? Yeah, they don't. They don't. They don't double book. Uh, you know, they uh, hotel had breakfast, which was it is like so. We had we stayed at the Sleep Inn, mm-hmm. which was a really decent hotel. That was like a you know that hotel was probably like a three and a half four star hotel. You know, <laughs> that boy say three uh, and a half four star. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I mean, I done stayed say some nice, some nice stuff, man. <laughs> so I ain't gonna give them too much credit. <laughs> but it was, it was a nice hotel. There wasn't no, there wasn't no uh, busted red roof in, or you know, uh, or you know, nothing like that. Motel six or nothing like that. <laughs> you know, it was a sweet bed. Uh, the hotel had breakfast. They paid for your lunch. Um, like you went out to lunch with the terminal manager and uh, head driver manager and stuff like that. But they didn't double book your room. You had your own room, and that was dope. Like I drove down there, and they paid me for the miles down there. I don't don't really remember how much, but they paid me for the miles down there. I mean, I only paid an hour, so it wasn't the tough thing. Okay, okay, that's what's up. All right, man. Well, uh, I do appreciate you coming on, chopping it up with me about uh, night transportation. If you guys interested in night transportation, man, all y'all got to do is just go on the website. Let me see if I can bring that website up for you guys. Probably make it a little bit easier. Let's see. Night. And, uh, whoops. Uh, ooh, night Swift. There it is. Says Night Swift become a driver. Look at that. Look at that. Night Swift become a driver. All you got to do is type in nightswift.com or night.com and uh, go to their truck driving and you can see what they did. Hey, what what division you drove, bro? You you drove uh you drove the uh the reefer division or the uh or the van division? Do they got a? Uh, oh, I was, I was driving. Hey, do they? Do, what other divisions do they also have there? Do they got tanker, uh, flatbed? Uh, so I know they. I know they have flatbed. I know it was a, a new division when I was there. They got animal, uh, drive and reefer, and uh, they had uh, Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, all right. You know, 
All right. So if you guys are interested in night transportation, give them a call. 1-800 or 800. 1-888-992-5783. All and uh talk to a recruiter today today that's what we're gonna do today all right well brother man thank you for coming on chopping it up with me about uh night transportation man if you guys want to come on and just chop it up with me about anything or if you got anything that you want me to chop it up about yo just hit me up in the lockout man podcast at gmail.com come over to instagram leave something over there at lockout man or just leave it in the comments and we can get together that way man yo if you like content like this don't forget to like subscribe comment share and hit that bell for more content like this make sure you hit that bell make sure you hit that all button because if you don't hit that all button then you will never know when i drop the nets lockout men podcast or the nets lockout men mtc series or the nets live or whatever you know what i'm saying all right so i want to thank my special guest for coming on today for talking to, with uh sharing his experience with uh night transportation and on that note i appreciate you guys watching and listening and we are gone